For another straight day, thick, heavy smoke wafting from wildfires continues to envelop some of Canada's biggest cities. In Canada's capital, it's become hard to bear. I thought I would just wear a mask, but it's, uh, it's worse than I thought. Our eyes are watery all the time, and uh, it's really horrible. In places like Ottawa and Kingston, the air quality has gotten so bad, it's downright dangerous. The air quality health index in both cities hit 10 plus, or a very high risk to health. Ottawa's medical officer of health says it's led to an increase in hospital visits. Yeah, it's been hard to breathe. A lot of headaches, a lot of tiredness. These university students found refuge at their local library in Kingston, which opened its doors to locals to escape the ever-increasing haze. Health experts are urging the very young, old, and those with health conditions to stay indoors. We're seeing vulnerable people at risk, outdoor events cancelled, kids having to be kept inside at recess. But it's unavoidable when your work forces you outside. It's been much harder on the guys, a lot more sort of headaches. Uh, you got to take more breaks, more water. If this holds out for the rest of the summer, it will be a hard, slow summer. In Quebec, members of the Algonquins of Barrier Lake worked hard to protect their territory from raging fires. But the smoke pushing in forced them to leave. The fires have been contained uh, nearby. Uh, but there's still a lot of uh, heavy smoke coming from those areas. Health experts say people should check Environment Canada's air quality index before venturing out to make sure it's safe to do so until things clear up. Idil Moussa, CBC News, Toronto. And obviously that smoke doesn't recognize national borders. Right now some 90 million Americans across 16 states from Texas to Vermont are under smoke alerts, but nowhere is it worse than New York, where smoke and neon have combined to create a bit of an eerie glow. Strange skies over Times Square and across the city, famous landmarks in framed thick glowing haze. From the Roosevelt Island tramway to an empty Yankee Stadium, the game cancelled. Chris Reyes shows us the scene from across the Hudson River. Well, the smell is strong and the haze is thick, I'll tell you that. I am in Weehawken, New Jersey on the Hudson River and on a clear day you would be able to see the entire Manhattan skyline behind me from the downtown core to midtown. Sometimes you can even see uh, the Empire State Building from here all the way to the Upper West Side. But as you can see, only faint outlines of the buildings because of how thick the haze is and that's been pretty much uh, the conditions all day in and around New York City. Today, New York City ranked as having the worst air quality in the world, about twice as bad as Delhi and Dubai. New York City's mayor, Eric Adams, uh, warning residents to limit all outdoor activities. He said this is unprecedented, something New Yorkers have never seen before. Uh, at some point today, uh, LaGuardia Airport had to ground flights because of the visibility. And certainly from the looks of this skyline, it's hard to tell when it's all all going to clear up. Chris Reyes, CBC News, New Jersey. So here's a familiar face. Dr. Samir Gupta is here to walk us through all of this. Thank you for being here. These images uh, out of New York and other parts of Canada are pretty striking. Yeah. And as I see them, I'm curious, short, short term, what is all that smoke doing to our bodies? Lots of different things. And we know this from many studies. When people breathe in that material, particularly those tiny particles, it has all sorts of effects on the lungs some of those particles make their way into the bloodstream and have effects on other organs like the heart. So one thing we see is an increase in emergency room visits for things like asthma and COPD. So people who have lung conditions, they flare up. We also see more heart attacks. In some studies, we see more strokes, more clots, pulmonary embolism, more heart failure, all sorts of impacts on the lungs and the heart in particular. Because those particles are getting in there? That's right, it's what we worry about. So anytime you burn a fossil fuel, a carbonaceous material like wood, you're gonna get all sorts of gases that are released, but you're also gonna get these tiny particles we call PM 2.5, particulate matter that is 2.5 microns or smaller. They're tiny enough that when you breathe them in, they go all the way deep into the lungs and that's how they cause the damage. And it's very carbon rich, particularly because it's burning wood. There's some studies that suggest that that carbon rich PM 2.5 is even more harmful for the body. All right, Dr. Gupta, we have a lot more to ask you, and, and you'll be back in a few minutes, all right? All right.